everybody, it's Amber from Body Positive Yoga here. You can learn more about me and my work at bodypositiveyoga.com. I have a question today from a follower online, and so let's jump right into it. How are you able to get to the point where you learn to love and accept yourself regardless of size? Although I endorse the body positive movement, I do find it hard to find that acceptance that I encourage in others, and quite honestly, it almost feels hypocritical to me. I'm surrounded by friends and a community who are all about health, fitness, appearance, material things, getting a man, etc. I feel like Wednesday Adams at her all white girl preppy school, only she didn't give a shit. <laughs> it's very hard not to fall into the diet and exercise trap. I hear it every day how this one is doing this challenge, this one has eliminated this from their diet, this one's doing juice plus, and it's all in the name of health, I am told. If you did this or that, they say, don't you want to have a relationship again and feel good about yourself? So no man is going to want me because I have gained weight is what I'm being told indirectly. I think exercise is great when it's enjoyable and not part of punishment. I'm really struggling with this and not just with my weight and appearance, but feeling like I don't fit in anywhere. There's a lot going on here. I'm just going to come out and say it. I think you need new friends. Seriously. It, the environment that we place ourselves in, the people that we surround ourselves with can have a huge effect on our self-esteem, on our self-worth, on um, our definition of success. You know, I heard you say in here that you uh, think exercise is great when it's not um, out of punishment and when it's enjoyable. And it sounds like your intuition is right here, that moving your body for the sheer joy of moving it and for the, the way that you feel when you move your body for um, the good feelings that it brings up is the way to go and not this sort of punitive means to an end sort of exercise that's like you're not going to catch a man unless you run on the treadmill and burn off parts of your body right so it sounds like the people that you're surrounding yourself with are really caught up in that uh you know fat talk and diet um, mentality diet culture mentality and i'm going to advocate that you uh find a new group of friends to hang out with I think that one of the biggest things that we can do for ourselves if we're doing any kind of body acceptance or self-acceptance work or trying to break free from diet culture is to really uh, create our own community. You know, we're not going to get this validation from the media. We're not going to get it from diet companies. We're not going to probably get it from uh, the gym where we work out. You know, sometimes they're uh, selling weight loss and things like that. And so if you're trying to get off of that hamster wheel, you really do need to get uh, people around you, whether that's in real life or online, um, who will support you and who are going through the same things in the same journey. So, you know, these dieting friends of yours have definitely done that for themselves. They're all supporting each other in their cleanses or their, you know, elimination diets or their calorie restriction or whatever. And it sounds like you're just in the wrong group. So for those of us who are trying to do something that's the opposite, of course you feel like you don't fit in because you're having to contend with a constant influx of uh, people who are telling you the opposite of what you know to be best for your body, which is joyful movement, which is probably intuitive eating, which is listening to your body's signals instead of taking the input from some expert or some list of foods or some prescribed number of calories and really tuning in to your body and finding out what does make me feel good. What, when do I feel well? When do I feel my best? And surrounding yourself with people who can support you in that journey, whether that's a you know nutritionist who understands intuitive eating, whether that's a therapist who can help you work through some of the baggage and the body shame that we've all grown up with um, just as a, um, a, a fact of living in Western society. Maybe it's friends that you start a weight neutral movement or exercise group with. Um, that you can meet up and do different fun activities without having to have the focus be on exercising to change your size, shape, or weight, but instead to just move your body joyfully. And so I think that really looking at your community and the people you surround yourself with and making sure that you know, the time that you spend, uh, you know, we all have like such little time to invest in people and things. We've all got so much going on. 
the little bit of time that you do give these people, uh, that you take their counsel, that counsel should be something that lines up with the best self that you're trying to pursue. I also want to say that, you know, you said, um, you are surrounded by friends who are all about health, fitness, and then it changed appearance, material things, and getting a man. So I want to say those things are separate things. And, you know, health and fitness are great. Those are worthy goals to have, um, to be well in your body, whatever that looks like for you, and to uh, be fit, to be able to move throughout your life and do the activities and the things that you want to do in your body. Those are worthy goals. But appearance, material things, getting a man, those are not really related to health and fitness. <laughs> so if your goals are health and fitness and to be well in the body that you have today, I don't think those necessarily have to be related to these other uh, pursuits. Now, if you want to change your appearance or you know look at the way you dress or the way you present in the world, that's fantastic. But I wanna say from one bigger girl to another, that a lot of times when people give you uh, advice or that they're concerned for your health in this vague health uh, reason, and they want you to lose weight for your health, I think most of the time that means they just are uncomfortable with the fact that you're fat, that you're in a bigger body. And actually, unless they're your doctor and unless they've seen a chart with all your health markers on there, they really don't have any idea whether you're healthy or not. And you really don't have any idea whether they're healthy or not. You can't look at someone and tell if they're healthy or not. Weight and health are two different things. They're not mutually exclusive. And so I think it's good to um, practice critical thinking. And when we receive these messages that we need to do something for our health, let's not just take that at face value. Let's really examine that and say like, well, what do you mean by that? And to really keep in mind that you need to define what healthy looks like for you because it is an individual thing. Health is a spectrum. It's not a, um, a, it's not a bullseye on a target, right? And I, health looks different for each and every person. And I think that's really uh, important to remember in our individual journeys toward whatever healthy looks like for us and whatever you've agreed with your doctor or your caretaker um, your care providers that is healthy for you because it is individual and it's different for everybody. So don't let people say that you need to do this and such for your health without really questioning a little bit further. And often, you know, their argument or their advice can fall apart. You know, we have culturally sort of um, sanctioned ideas of what healthy looks like. And honestly, it's a moving target, right? We see on the cover of tabloids all the time, like on um, one week, this actress has cellulite on the beach. Oh my gosh, needs to uh, like do something about her health. And then two weeks later, they're like, ah, oh, she's anorexic. She needs to eat a sandwich. Like same person, like it's a moving target and no one wins in this game. So health based on appearance is really like, it's not data. It's not anything that um, can be definitively declared. And so I encourage you to challenge these folks when they come at you about health and see if you can really drill down to what's behind that argument. And often it's appearance based. It's um, based in fat phobia. It's based in cultural beauty standards, which are totally arbitrary and which change all the time. And so you really need to understand, first of all, what healthy looks like to you and be able to stand your ground and um, say that uh, you're doing what you need to do for your health. The other thing I wanted to say was that even if you don't proactively seek out um, new friends or that's not something that you can do at this time, you can be known <laughs> in these circles as the person who, it's not really cool to talk about dieting or weight or uh, fasting or juice cleanses or detox or any of this crazy stuff with. So I used to work in a corporate office and I worked with a lot of women and we all know that many, many women uh, bond over fat talk, about uh, self-deprecating about their bodies, about talking about diet and calories and food and exercise and blah, 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 same stuff you're dealing with. And 
I often, when this would start, I would either change the subject and talk about something else, or uh, if it was a particularly um, persistent person who always wanted to talk about food and wait around me, every time they would bring it up, I would start to say like, oh my gosh, what's going on in your life? This is so boring. I really don't want to talk about dieting anymore. It's really just not something that I'm interested in. And you say that enough and that person may not like take a hint and be like, oh, maybe it isn't that interesting to talk about dieting. I should really examine that, but they won't talk about it around you. And so I think that, um, you know, the core of the message that you sent me was like, I really don't fit in anywhere. You can build your own community where you do feel like you fit in. But the other thing is you don't have to fit in with these people. You can determine that your life is going to be different and you're blazing a different path than they are. You're not going to be basic. You're not going to be obsessed with diet and food and weight and all that stuff. You have better stuff to do. So be known as the person around your office, around your church or your study group or whatever it is that is uh doing more interesting things than obsessing over body size or calories or whatever. I know you are a vibrant and amazing person, and I think that you should not be afraid to uh, let that shine out into the world and uh, let these people know that you've got better things to do than to count the calories in your juice cleanse or whatever. I hope that helps. Uh, if you have questions, let me know. If you have comments about how you've um, mitigated these types of issues, please post them below and I'll see you next time. Thanks.